There is nothing more quintessentially British than tea and biscuits. Whether you have a plain or with tea and milk, it always pairs well with a nice digestive or chaffer cake. Although, love, there is one thing you should know. I ain't gonna be making any of this sissy red coat crap. We're doing tea and biscuits American style for the 4th of July. That means nice, hearty, fluffy biscuits that don't have stupid names like digestive. And the kind of tea that'll give you type 2 diabetes within three sips. Let's begin cooking. Oh, the hang on. Who came up with the name digestive biscuit? Is this a baked sweet treat or anti-diarrhea medication? Ugh. Okay, first part of our patriotic baking journey, the biscuit. First thing you gotta do, preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Were the Brits even more oppressive to you and you'd like to make this dish just to spite them? The number you're looking for is 220 degrees Celsius. So let's add three cups of all-purpose flour to a food processor. Yeah, a bit unusual, I'll explain later. So yeah, like I said, three cups of all-purpose flour to a food processor. Then let's add one tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, and let's add one tablespoon of aluminum-free baking powder. Why aluminum-free? Because there really is no stronger flavors like chocolate or vanilla being introduced here. The flavor of a biscuit is nice and subtle. And trust me, aluminum is not subtle. You're gonna taste it in the final product, so I play it safe, go with aluminum-free baking powder. And finally, we're gonna add two sticks of unsalted butter. And this is why I like making any flaky dough, whether it be a pie crust or biscuits, in a food processor. It gives you nice little stones of butter in a fraction of a second, as opposed to pinching it, or freezing it, then grating it, Kind of moot because your body heat and the friction from the grating is reheating the butter. Anyway, enough pedantic nitpicking. Dive on the lid. And pulse until everything's eh, semi-homogenous. Okay, everything's been thoroughly incorporated. Okay, let's transfer the flour mixture to a bowl. And let's add one cup of buttermilk. You can use regular milk, but I do recommend getting your hands on some buttermilk. Okay, now this is important. Just mix everything until it comes together. Don't overwork it. Okay, this is looking a bit on the dry side. I'm gonna add a little bit more buttermilk. Okay, when it's mostly moist, but still a little bit crumbly, let's uh, turn it out onto a workable surface. Okay, our countertop is resembling Miami Beach circa 1986. Transfer our dough. This is important, and in order to get those nice, sexy layers, we're gonna fold our dough multiple times. Let's roll this baby out to a half inch thickness. Might have to dust the rolling pin, that's fine. Daddy. Next, grab yourself a dough cutter that's uh, about the size and circumference of a regular tall drinking glass. And it's time to trigger your tryptophobia. Well, you thought I was joking? I meant it when I say I'm gonna trigger your tryptophobia. Place our biscuit rounds onto a parchment lined baking sheet. And uh, let's just uh, reform the scraps. Yeah, I tossed the thing in the sink. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, let's roll these out again. Now I'll just form these last two by hand. Okay, before we send this to the oven, let's give all of our little biscuits, even the ones with extra chromosomes, a nice coating of egg wash. Stick our biscuits in the middle of our 425 degree oven and let it cook for 20 minutes. Taste the biscuit. Taste the goodness of the biscuit. All right. Our biscuits are done cooking. Let's transfer these to a cooling rack. 
Okay, and while our biscuits cool, let's get to work on our sweet tea. Okay, so let's add one cup of sugar to a pitcher. You know, I'm feeling extra patriotic. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Two and a half cups of water. And we're gonna bring this to a boil. You can do this on your stove top, but really an electric kettle or an inducting heater is much faster. Okay, the water has come to a boil. Switch off the heat. And let's dump in five to seven tea bags, depending how strong you like it. And me, ooh, I want mine stronger than Lou Albano Mario. Come back here, you big monkey. Mommy, Okay, swirl it around so it can unleash its tea goodness. Okay, I'm gonna let this steep for a bit. All right, it's steeped for a while. Let me remove these. Squeeze out any excess tea. Pour our concentrated tea mixture into our pitcher. Keep stirring until all the sugar is dissolved. Top it off with cold water. And finally, let's top it off with some ice. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, because of the weird shape, it's not gonna fit. Let's just go with it. Okay, nice and chilled, and it's ready for America's birthday. And here we go, folks. Some lovely stomach stuffers for the 4th of July. And yeah, I didn't have any ancestors who fought in the American Revolution. But you know I can't pass up an opportunity to stick it to the Brits. Mmm, flavorful without the U. This has been Chase Cut in the Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it this time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really liked the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and support me on Patreon. And yeah, and yeah, I didn't shave. I was at VidCon all day this weekend. Give me some slack.